Greetings everyone. Welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today we are going to analyze the Hindu dated 21st of December 2019. Displayed on the screen is a list of articles that we are going to analyze today. Time stamping for the same has been provided in the description of the video. Let's begin. We have taken this news from page number 17 and it talks about Panel OK's Spectrum Auction Plan. Now this topic is important more from the perspective of the prelims examination and it will be relevant from the perspective of the science and technology. As a subtopic, it will be covered under information technology and telecom sector. In this analysis, we will be covering two, three important aspects of this news. First and foremost, the news itself which talks about spectrum auction plan. What are the kind of problems and challenges that the industry expects and what is the government's take on that will be discussed in this news analysis. Second important aspect would be the institution of Digital Communication Commission. And lastly, we'll be talking about 5G technology and how it is better than the 4G technology. But before moving further, let's first understand the context of the news. Now it is important for you to know that the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, which is also called as TRI, has recommended auction of 8300 megahertz of spectrum for 4G and 5G services and these recommendations are approved by Digital Communications Commission. It is important here to note that Digital Communication Commission is the highest decision making authority at the level of Department of Telecommunications. So we will be talking about Digital Communications Commission in detail in our further slides. Now the second important aspect is that the reserve price for the spectrum has been kept at around rupees 5.22 lakh crores. Now it is important to know that major telecom players were demanding that these prices should be brought down. These major telecom providers said that they are under debt and under financial stress and hence they wanted the reserve price of the spectrum to be much lower. Also important here is to understand that out of this 8300 megahertz 6050 megahertz is reserved for 5G services and the rest is for the 4G services and these services will be offered across 22 telecom circles. So these are the important things about this spectrum auction plan. Now let us understand the entire process in detail. Now the first is the TRI or the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India which has recommended for the auction of the telecom spectrum at a specified price. Now the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India sends this recommendation to the Digital Communications Commission. So this is the second body and as already mentioned in the Department of Telecommunication it is the highest body. Once DCC or Digital Communications Commission approves that then it is sent to the cabinet for the approval and once it is approved by the cabinet the spectrum will be auctioned. It is expected that the auction will take place in the month of March, April 2020. Now let's understand the genesis of the body which is called as Digital Communications Commission. Now it is important here to know that Digital Communications Commission was erstwhile telecom communication. It was set up by the government of India via the resolution dated 11th of April 1989. At the same time you should know that this commission had administrative as well as financial powers. These powers were bestowed by the government of India to deal with various aspects of telecommunication. Now the government by the resolution on 22nd of October 2018 has redesignated the Telecom Commission as Digital Communications Commission which in short is called as DCC. The digital communication basically comprises of chairman and four full-time members and four part-time members. Now as far as full-time members are concerned, the members basically come from the finance, production, service and technology. At the same time, the secretary of the government of India in the department of telecommunications is the ex-officio chairman of the digital communications commission. The part-time members of digital communications are chief executive officer Niti Ayo, Secretary Department of Economic Affairs, Secretary Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and Secretary Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion. 
so these are the people who basically man digital communications commission now please take a note that these are important facts and you should keep this thing in mind for the prelims examination at the same time you should also know that digital communications commission has been entrusted the responsibility to formulate the policy of department of telecommunication for the approval of government prepare the budget for the department of telecommunication for each financial year and getting it approved by the government and implementation of government's policy in all matters concerning telecommunication so this is what the mandate of dcc is all about formulate prepare budget and implementation of government policy now let's focus our attention about 5g now when we talk about generation we know that we have seen 2g communication 3g communication and 4g communication so in this g is referred to as generation so when we talk about 5g it is the fifth generation of cellular technology that will provide faster and more reliable communication with ultra low latency now again it is important to know what is the meaning of latency latency is defined as the amount of time data takes to travel between a source and destination so this is what the latency rate means now 5g communication has ultra low latency rate it has a latency rate of just 1 microsecond in comparison if we talk about 4g communication 4g has latency rate of around 10 microsecond so you can see that this communication system is around 10 times faster than the next best 4g communication now as per the government panel report 5g will have peak network data speed of around 2 to 20 gigabits per second it is also important here to understand that 4g technology currently offers 6 to 7 megabits per second in india however the western counterpart of 4g offers around 25 mbps so we can see that there will be a significant jump in the data speed when the 5g is rolled out now it brings us to the next question who or how does it benefit first all those things which require heavy data content like 8k movies games etc these can be done in seconds and this is where the maximum benefit would be at the same time 5g would impact economy in much bigger ways once internet of things and machine to machine communications becomes much more robust it will be supporting much larger range of applications and services which would include like driverless vehicles telecommunication surgery and real time data analysis according to the government panel the 5g technology will revolutionize all sectors of economy from industrial to commercial educational healthcare agriculture finance and social sectors so the benefits if we talk about of 5g are far and wide it is expected that 5g would create an economic impact of usd 1 trillion by the year 2035 some private operators like ericsson projects that the impact of 5g technology in terms of revenue potential would be around us dollar 27 billion by 2026 this is something which is very important for us to know that this technology is going to the pivot for the economy in the future at the same time we need to know that in april of 2019 south korea and us became the first countries to commercially launch 5g services so this topic of 5g is very important from the perspective of prelims examination and you should make your notes about this topic in detail on the page number 10 of today's newspaper there is an image which talks about imperfect sync it showcases an image where a csf contingent is marching at their passing out parade now this topic is important more from the perspective of general studies paper 3 and it shall be covered under the topic security as a sub topic there is a clear mention various security forces agencies and their mandate in this context it is important for us to go through central armed police forces the reason for this is very simple cisf or central industrial security forces comes under the ambit of central armed police forces now let's understand the nature of central armed police forces first and foremost there are five central armed police forces which are named first 
the border security force second central industrial security force third central reserve police force fourth indo tibetan border police and fifth shashastra seema bal one central paramilitary force or cpmf which is named as assam rifles is under the ministry of home affairs so this is what the structure of in terms of central armed police forces at the same time they are divided as border guarding forces now when we talk about border guarding forces then assam rifles border security forces indo tibetan border police and shashastra seema bal are considered to be border guarding forces so these are four in number at the same time when we talk about internal security forces then crpf comes to picture crpf is deployed to assist civil administration under the state government and union territories and there is a clear cut idea about how central reserve police forces will be deployed they will be deployed in the matters relating to maintenance of public order internal security and counter insurgency so in this way we can see that central armed police forces are divided into border guarding forces and internal security forces apart from that there is also a security force for important installations so the third category about which we should talk about is security forces for important installations now this is where central industrial security force comes into picture cisf provides security and protection to vital installations of national and strategic importance now when we talk about such kind of institutions it would include public sector undertakings like psus airports atomic power plants space organizations industrial units important national museums government buildings in delhi and other important sensitive organization so these are the various installations of national and strategic importance which is basically manned by cisf forces now we need to know more about cisf first when was it raised now as far as csf is concerned it was raised in year 1969 and as we have already mentioned csf provides security covers to critical infrastructure in the country now when we talk about this critical infrastructure we need to focus on few of the things where csf lays its protective cover first and foremost is airport it provides security to around 61 airports of domestic and international nature within in india now this is a very specialized task that csf has been entrusted upon and was given to csf in the year 2000 in the wake of hijacking of indian airline flight ic814 to kandar since then csf has been protecting our airports csf is important not only for protecting assets from security threats but also for fire protection it covers 102 undertakings for fire protection so you can see that the task of cisf is not limited to security but it is also in other fields as well now let us focus our attention to vital installations in terms of category now first is the energy infrastructure and when we talk about energy infrastructure cisf provides security cover for atomic power plants hydroelectric or thermal power plants and oil fields and refineries at the same time when we talk about space ISRO is one of the premier institutes in India and ISRO's security is covered by CISF so all the installation of ISRO across India are covered by CISF next is industry establishment and when we talk about industry establishment it focuses on defense production units strategic mines major seaports heavy engineering steel plants fertilizer units etc now the government security is also the responsibility of CISF and we have seen that various heritage buildings and monuments are covered by csf one of the premier ones is taj mahal overall csf is responsible for 46 sensitive and hyper sensitive government buildings in new delhi only so you can see the kind of impact csf has on the security of india apart from this csf also provides technical consultancy csf provides security and fire protection to industries in public and private sector and for this it's act as a technical consultancy body 
Apart from this, foreign deployment is also part of CISF duty and recently United Nations Stabilization Mission in Haiti is also manned by Central Industrial Security Forces. Now you must have also seen that CISF also guards private citizen. Now how it is possible given the fact CISF is a government agency. Now you need to understand that CISF Act was amended to enable force to provide security on payment basis to private or joint venture industrial undertaking which are vital for the security and economy of the country. At the same time, we know that largest refinery in India, which is Reliance in Jamnagar, is also guarded by CISF. And it is so as it is considered vital for the security and economy of the country. So in this way, you can see that CISF provides security blanket to wide network of institutions and organization. At the same time, the nature of work is also very wide. This topic is important more from the perspective of the mains examination and it is important in terms of the security forces under GS paper 3. We have taken this news from page number 11 and it talks about army to sign deal for six Apache helicopters with the US. Now this news is important from the perspective of science and technology and it will be covered under defense. The news also highlights the changing nature of ties between India and the United States. It is needless to highlight that since 2015 and 16, India has emerged as a strategic defense partner with the US. And in this context, this news is important. Another significant aspect is that this deal is about army. You might be aware that recently Air Force has acquired 22 Apache attack helicopters. So in this context, let's go through the basics of the news. First, the deal to acquire six additional Apache helicopters for Indian Army under the foreign military sales route will be signed in early 2020. Now, as already mentioned, in 2015, India and US had signed US dollar $3 billion deal for 22 AH-64E Apache helicopter and 15 Chinook helicopters. Now, you must be aware that Chinook is heavy lift helicopters for the Indian Air Force. In the May this year, the Indian Air Force has already inducted eight Apache-based helicopters in the Pathan Court. So these are the important things about this deal. Now we need to know more about this attack helicopter, which is the mainstay of the US defense as well. The first thing that we need to know is that Apache is a multi-role combat helicopter. And when we say multi-role, one of the primary role that it performs is of data collection. It can enter deep into the army territory and it has got a very robust radar system through which it can collect data and can transfer it to the radar system. So this is again a very important facet of this article. As we have seen in various US missions, it is the main attack helicopter of the US Army. It is an all weather attack helicopter that can engage both in air and ground targets. Now when you talk about the deal that US and India have signed, this Apache helicopter has been customized in accordance to the need of India to enhance the defensive capability, to counter ground armored threats and modernize its armed forces. Now some of the characteristic features of this Apache helicopter are that it has fire control radars, it is armed with Hellfire missiles which is more of an anti-tank missile. In the time to come when India develops its NAG that is anti-tank missile and Helena, then these missiles can also be launched through the Apache helicopter. Apart from that, this helicopter system has its defense system as well. It has Stinger Block 192H missile system as well. This helicopter is capable to operate in any kind of weather and visibility condition, which includes night vision as well. Apart from that, it has got inertial navigation system, which helps in the navigation in the hostile enemy territory. Now few of the things which make this helicopter one of the leading ones in the world is that it has got low radar signature. So it is relatively stealthy in nature and can enter enemy territory without detection. It has the capability to destroy enemy tanks, armored personal carriers and fortified enemy positions in any kind of terrains which include mountainous terrains as well. The ability of Apache 
to trek through mountainous terrains makes it a significant addition to India's defense capability. At the same time, it provides cover to army tanks, infantry during hostile conditions. It will bolster India's ability to defend its homeland and deter regional threats. Now, in the similar context, you must also know about foreign military sales. Now, FMS or foreign military sales is more of a security assistance program of the US under its Arms Export Control Act, that is AECA. It primarily is aimed at strengthening strategic partnership with foreign countries and in this case with India. It is more of a government to government agreement. Now, according to this foreign military sales, government to government agreement is signed for military sales and services. You must also be aware that in 2008, the bilateral trade between India and US in the defense sector was almost zero. However, when we talk about the current situation, US is one of the leading defense partner with India. Now, through the FMS, that is foreign military sales, government to government military sales from US to India in the recent year is valued at US dollar 1.62 billion. Now, through this deal, the government has procured C-17 transport aircrafts, Harpoon missiles, support for C-130J Super Hercules aircraft and chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear support agreement. Apart from this, government is also planning to engage with the US government for many other foreign military sales, which includes rifles as well. So this topic is important more from the perspective of prelims examination and you can expect a question or two about the same helicopter in the coming exam as well. On the page number 17 of today's newspaper, there's an article about Operation Twists and it talks about yield on the government bonds drop. Now this article was covered exhaustively yesterday, that is 20th of December 2019 by Mangal sir. Please go through the article as discussed by Mangal sir for a complete grasp on the topic where Mangal sir has discussed everything about Operation Twist which includes questions from the previous years as well. There is also an article about Bharat Bond ETF which was subscribed 1.7 times. Now this article again was covered on 5th of December 2019 where Arun sir has discussed all about in terms of features, benefits and overall impact of Bharat Bond. In this context, it is important for you to go back and go through this article of 5th of December 2019. Based on today's discussion, let's take up practice questions. Practice question number one. Which of the following statements is are correct about Digital Communications Commission? The first is Minister of Telecommunication is the ex officio chairman of Digital Communications Commission. This is incorrect. The Secretary of the Government of India in the Department of Telecommunications is the ex officio chairman of the Commission. And hence, this statement is incorrect. Second is it is the highest decision making body at the Department of Telecommunication. This statement is correct. By this logic, the correct answer is option B, that is two only. Let's take the next question. Which of the following statements is are correct about Central Industrial Security Forces or CISF? First, it provides only security cover to government establishment in India. This is incorrect as not only security but also fire safety cover is also provided by CISF. So this is incorrect. Second, since its inception, CISF has been providing security to airports. Now, CISF was established in 1969 and it started providing security cover at airports from 2000 onwards after Kandhar episode. And hence, the second statement is also incorrect. The third is it comes under the Ministry of Defense. This again is incorrect as the department is under the Ministry of Home Affairs. So the, all the statements are incorrect and correct answer is option D, that is none of the above. With this, we have come to the end of today's session. Let's move to the question of the day.